Now, here's your host, Bill Teagan. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. The Cowboys won and won this past week with a loss to Kansas and a victory over Oral Roberts. And, Coach, never a dull moment at this time of year when you have Kansas coming to town especially. We've had some uh, classic uh, contests in Gallagher-Iowa with the Jayhawks in the six years I've been here. I guess the game on Monday evening was the most one-sided, and uh, there's no doubt in the minds of our team and our coaching staff that Kansas is the best team in the country. We played them extremely well in the first half. Uh, defensively, uh, we did the things we needed to do to stay in the game. We were down two at halftime. And then in the second half, uh, they were able to jam that ball inside, and uh, they didn't do too many things wrong. In fact, Roy Williams told me after the game that was the best 20 minutes they've played all season. But outstanding ball club. Uh, one thing I can say in defense of our players, I thought they really competed hard. And uh, in the uh, second game this week, we defeated uh, one of my former assistants, uh, ball club, uh, Bill Self, uh, Oral Roberts University, and he's really done a good job with his ball club. Uh, they're going to win a lot of games, and uh, you give him another year or two, and they're going to have a very, very fine basketball team. But we won that game 73-56, to but uh, it too wasn't easy for a while. It was some great basketball. We'll take a look at that, and we'll take a look at the Kansas Jayhawks as they come to Gallagher Ave Arena when the Eddie Sutton Show continues. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. The Cowboys open Big A play Monday, Big Monday ESPN, and uh, the Kansas Jayhawks ranked number three in the country coming in. We had beaten them uh, four out of five times uh, here at home and uh, really have uh, played Kansas probably about as well as anybody in, uh, in our conference during the last five-year period. But as I said, uh, they've really kind of dominated uh, the Big Eight uh, during the early part of the 90s. And uh, they're always tough, but uh, I really feel like that uh, there's maybe three or four teams in the country that are on a different level than anyone else, and they certainly are one of them. You saw Jerome Lambert right there. He had a spark in his eye I hadn't seen all year. Jerome uh, has played better this week, and I think one reason is that he just is feeling better. His knee is uh, healing up. And uh, that little guy right there sparked us, <laughs> R.W. McCorders. Uh, he uh, came into this ball game and excited the crowd and uh, really uh, did a great job as far as uh, doing the things you need to do as a point guard. I, I continue to marvel at the quickness and speed that he has. Uh, I can see why he's such a great defensive back in, in football. He's so strong, isn't he? Upper body especially. Extremely strong and uh, a fierce competitor. And like you mentioned, boy, you look at his eyes and uh, he's ready to play all the time. And there he is uh, getting a, a layup on a nice pass. You talked about your defensive effort. Was this as well as you've played for the first 20 minutes? I thought the first half, and there's a good uh, example of defense. They tried to feed the ball inside, and uh, good pass by Marlin to uh, R.W., but he, and we knocked it down, and our defense alertly picked it up and, uh, and got a two-point basket out of it. McQuarters had 14 points. Peterson had 14. Great hustle right here. Two freshmen almost had half our points. There's another good uh, example of uh, your defense getting the basketball or you getting the ball off the board on a missed shot and, and transition, running with it and trying to beat the other team's defense down the floor. Andre makes a great pass to Keontae and Keontae's uh, very good at finishing uh, the shot on a fast break. There's Jerome Lambert on a missed shot. Look at Good that. hustle play. There's a good example of strength <laughs> right there by R.W. McCorders. I think that was against Pollard, wasn't it? I was. wasn't sure who that was against. He went way There's up there. a basket by Lambert. But our defense was excellent in the first half, and, uh, and and that's why we were able to stay in the game. There's Peterson. Talk about Pete. Seems to have a little more uh, well, We've confidence. been doing a lot of individual counseling with all of our guys, and uh, Adrian Peterson has played very, very well as, for a freshman. Uh, uh, but I think he's lost a little confidence in the last oh, couple of weeks. And so... We talked to him and told him, hey, Pete, you got to get aggressive offensively and get on the boards. And I think it, uh, it certainly uh, uh, was very evident in the two games this week that he had regained some of that confidence and they shot the ball well. He had uh, 11 points in the game against ORU and 14 in this one and, and rebounded and, and played much better defense. So we're pleased about that. And Paul Pierce for Kansas. A Paul Pierce boy. may be the best freshman in the country. He's one of the five or six best. Uh, you know, we have two great freshmen, Billups at, uh, at uh, Colorado and Pierce, and we mentioned Peterson, but there's some good good uh, rookies coming in. But Paul Pierce, some people think at Kansas, he might be the, the uh, best player to come in uh, uh, to Kansas during uh, Roy Williams' tenure. So 
he certainly uh, impressed us. He's a leading uh, scorer in their ball club and just as a complete basketball player. You're down by two at halftime. you got to feel pretty good at this point. I thought we were in great shape, and we came out the second half, and you certainly don't want to take anything away from Kansas, but we were about as flat as I've seen a team come out of the dressing room uh, in gallagher Iba Arena since I've been here. And uh, well, if you're flat against Kansas, you're asking for problems, and I think they uh, quickly uh, enlarged their lead from about two into double figures, and from then on it was just uh, an uphill climb for us. You were talking about earlier this week about how difficult it's been to get the ball in the hoop this year. Well, we're, we don't have a go-to guy, and uh, we really don't have an in, inside player that can put a lot of uh, old pressure on the other team's uh, defense. And uh, we've just been so inconsistent in a half-court game. I think our transition offense has been good. We have run the fast break well, but. When we get in a half-court game, we've, we've struggled, and, that, and that's something we've got to get corrected because uh, uh, we've got to get where we score better. We got, what, 73 against Oral Roberts, but before that I think we had 53, 53, and 61 in the three previous games, and it just puts too much pressure on your defense. You've got to score more points than that. There's our W again, finished with 14, as you said, and boy, what a spark he was. There he is again. That's amazing. Look at that pass. That's beautiful. A couple freshmen combining there. Final score, 76-61. You said it, uh, you think Kansas is as good as anybody in the country? Uh, I think day in and day out, they are the best team. They're playing better than anyone else. Now, there's some other good ball clubs. Uh, Kentucky is right there with them. Uh, if you were to ask me who the two best ball clubs are, I'd say Kentucky and Kansas. And uh, I would judge that. Who do I have to go play? Uh, Kentucky, uh, <laughs> Connecticut, Massachusetts, uh, Georgetown, Cincinnati. Uh, those are all good basketball teams. But... Kansas is so strong in all positions. When you take a, a basketball team and, and they have a, an outstanding player in Pearson, mm -hmm. he starts 28 games last year for the Jayhawks, and now he comes off the bench, and they're just so deep in all positions and, and certainly well coached. And uh, uh, I, I really felt like that we had a, a chance to beat Kansas, but uh, we just didn't play well enough. You've got to play 40 minutes. Well, you only had a couple of days to get ready because the Golden Eagles of Oral Roberts came to gallagher Iba on Wednesday night, and as you mentioned, Bill Self, one of your former assistants, is the head man. He's really helped turn that program around, hasn't he? He's done an outstanding job, and of course, this is home week for his entire staff, uh, Steve Anthus, uh, Barry Henson, my youngest son, Scott, uh, Mike Carter, who is the athletic director, all Oklahoma State grads, and uh, I don't like to play assistant coaches, but uh, it's a good game for for them uh, when we go over there because it's a big money game for them. It gives our uh, fans in the Tulsa and Eastern Oklahoma area a chance to see us play because our games here at home are always sold out and they can't get tickets. So, uh, and they've also been kind enough to let us use maybe arena to play a game over there uh, each year. We played Cal Berkeley and SMU and Arizona State and Providence and uh, that's been very helpful to allow our fans a chance to see see us play. Coach, if you don't want to play your former assistants, it really cuts down on the number of teams you're going to be yeah. playing. But let's talk about this game a little bit. This was tough, too, uh, to, to get the ball in the hoop early in the game. Obviously, you guys made some nice plays defensively. You continue to play well defensively. We played in spurts. Uh, I thought our press was very, very good. We forced them into, uh, I think, 19 turnovers in the game. And uh, it led to a lot of easy baskets. Uh, we did an outstanding job on uh, their fine guard, Gill. Uh, again, Andre, RW, Keontae, uh, they were the ones that covered him most of the game. Uh, they only had one player in double figures, and that was Tim Gill. He had 10, and uh, he's capable of hitting you for 25 points. Our defense was good. Uh, our transition offense was good, but again, we struggled in a half-court situation, and we just got to uh, continue to work on that and, and get better. But. Uh, I thought our players in the second half really competed hard, and, and it was a closer game than the final score, and we finally did break the game, and there's, there's a good example of defense mm -hmm. getting the ball, and, and it leads to an easy uh, dunk by uh, Keontae Roberts. You finished with four players in double figures. We talked about Jerome Lambert. He's feeling better. It really looked like it on Wednesday night. Well, he was top scorer with 17 points, and he also pulled down seven boards. Uh, Keontae had 15, Jason had 11. I thought Jason looked uh, much better in this game than maybe he had looked in some of the previous games. He, uh, he also had five rebounds. Pete had uh, uh, 12 points, so we did have four players in double figures. Uh, we beat them uh, on the boards 41 to 27. 
Good trade from Pete right there. We both shot about the same percentage, about 45%. And uh, for the season, we're shooting about 48. And I guess that's the lowest we've shot from the field uh, since I've been at Oklahoma State. Guys, great hustle yeah, here. See, that's say. great hustle. Uh, we took a shot. Jason Scare kept the ball alive. Uh, Mo Robinson had a chance to tip it in, and uh, he and uh, Kevin had a chance, and finally Mo did knock it down, and, and we go into halftime with uh, with a 36-30 lead. They made it very difficult. About nine minutes left. It's a three-point game. Well, basketball is a game of momentum, and what you try to do when you have the momentum is to extend it, and when it goes against you, you want to curtail it as best you can. And uh, teams are going to make runs at you, and you, you want to stop them as quickly as possible. We jumped out, and I think we had about 11 or 12-point lead, and they came back and cut it down to three. Great job of uh, running the fast break. Here we go again. This is the quickness of R.W. McWhorters. And Lambert He's finishes a jet. it up. He's, uh, <laughs> he got a little careless late in the ball game here, and, uh, but that's a nice pass. Uh, or you hit us with what we call a scramble where they come and run at you with a couple of people. And, and one thing you never want to do is jump up in the air with a basketball unless you're going to shoot it. Don't jump up in the air when you're going to pass and try to make a decision because sometimes you can get hung up, and he did on a couple of occasions. There's, uh, I think, Jason Scare hitting that shot out of the corner. He had a couple of trays, and there's good ball movement inside. Keanu finishing it up. Tell you what, when, you, when they made it a three-point game, Coach, that's when you guys really exploded. Well, I think uh, we called timeout, and I told them, uh, I said, guys, I sense that uh, uh, if you guys don't start playing, you're in uh, jeopardy of losing. And of course, we had a 60-game non-conference uh, uh, record going, and by winning with 61 straight non-conference victories here in Gallagher-Iba, since I've been here, we haven't lost it to a non-conference game. And we only have one more this year, so that's something that the seniors have a chance to maintain is that uh, we always set goals for ourselves, and that's one of them. And uh, I think it's going to be possible we play uh, Cal State Northridge uh, next Wednesday night here, and that's our last non-conference game. There's Jason again from the corner. And, boy, it's good to see him coming through and some nice jumpers. Well, he Four had some a lot good better. shots. And there, that time, uh, R.W. got away with it. He jumped up in the air and, and uh, threw the ball to Keontae and made a real nice play. And there's another Makes nice, it look uh, easy there, Coach. See a deflection, very alertly. We pick the ball up, Marlon does. Gives it to RW, and, and uh, I don't know what we outscored him in the last eight or nine minutes, but uh, that's when we broke the ball game. Jason's form is so much better. Well, <clears throat> he's got the score for us, Bill. I mean, uh, you know, he, we feel like he's a double-figure scorer, and he just uh, he's like Peterson. They need to get out there and, and – and, believe in themselves, we believe in them, and get that confidence back and, and uh, go out there and, and put that ball in the hole. 73-56 was the final. Cowboys are now 9-3 and three overall, and when we come back in the Eddie Sutton Show, we'll take a look back at the Big 8 Conference. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. You know, this is the last year of the Big 8 Conference. Next year, the Big 12 takes center stage, but this has been a great conference. And our off-the-court feature today, uh, Tom Dorado is going to take a look back at one of the great conferences in the country. The final Big A Conference basketball season is barely underway. A great deal of excitement is still ahead before the curtain finally falls on this, the league's 88th year of operation. Oklahoma State has played a major role in the Big A's rich basketball heritage since joining the conference on June 1, 1957. Over the last five years, or since Eddie Sutton took over the Cowboy Reigns, Oklahoma State and Kansas have literally led the way. During Eddie's tenure, OSU leads the conference in league tournament championship appearances with three, first team all Big 8 selections with seven, and is tied with KU when it comes to NCAA tournament appearances with five. Kansas has 14 tournament wins over that stretch, OSU 10, and the rest of the league seven. OSU and the Jayhawks are also tied when it comes to NBA draft picks since 1991, each with five. These two teams are one and two in total Big 8 wins since 91. KU has 53 and the Cowboys 46. Since the NCAA bracket expanded to 64 teams in 1985, the Big 8 has sent at least three teams to the NCAA tournament annually. The all-time best for conference entrants is six. That occurred on two occasions in 1993 and again in 94. 
OSU has made five straight trips to the big dance under Eddie Sutton. Over the last nine seasons, the Big 8 has averaged 10,000 fans per contest. Since the 88-89 campaign, conference attendance for basketball has hovered around the 1.3 million mark each year. Gallagher Iba Arena has been sold out since the Sutton era began. Oklahoma State sports two of the Big 8's five players to record career totals of at least 2,000 points and 1,000 rebounds. Bryant Reeves and Byron Houston accomplished that feat during their careers at OSU. Seven former Cowboys have coached in the NCAA tournament over the years, including Eddie Sutton, the only coach in NCAA history to take four different teams to the Big Dance. And while that curtain continues to fall on the Big 8, we can only look ahead with great anticipation to what will certainly be one of the country's premier conferences, the Big 12. You know, the Big 8 has been a great conference, not only in basketball, but in all sports. But uh, I really believe the Big 12, by the year 2000, will be considered to be uh, maybe the best conference in America when you take in women's athletics, you take in baseball, golf, tennis, uh, football. Can you imagine all the matchups they're going to have there? But it's going to be a great league. And, of course, I guess of all the coaches in the Big 8, I'm the most familiar with the the teams that are joining our league because I coached at Arkansas for 11 years and played the University of Texas, Texas A&M, Baylor, and Texas Tech. And next year, of course, we'll be in the Southern Division uh, along with the University of Oklahoma and we'll play round robin with the four Texas schools and then we will play three games uh, on the road with the Northern Division and three games at home with the uh, Northern Division. Uh, the Big 12 schedule just came out uh, uh, here this week. I'm sure because of television commitments there'll be some of the games that will be switched but uh, right now it looks like uh, our first two games in 1996-97 uh, uh, season uh, in conference play will be the University of Oklahoma and University of Texas. So no, that's uh, great. Yeah, it is great. I tell you what, it's hard to believe it can get any better than what it is now but I think it's going to be even more fun. When we come back it's back to the Big 8 for the Cowboys. We'll take a look at that when the Eddie Sutton Show continues. <laughs> Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. Cowboys take on Iowa State on Saturday. First, we before we look at that, let's take a look at the standings. And Coach, it's still obviously very early in the uh, Big Eight season. What do you see there? Anything stand out? Well, I don't think anyone's going to uh, dethrone Kansas. I think Missouri might have a shot at them. Uh, I really believe that uh, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma is playing much better now, and Nebraska, and then the rest of the teams are probably all about the same. But uh, you look at the records on the right, uh, those are deceiving to a certain degree because some of the teams maybe haven't played as tough a schedule as others, but it's going to be a knockdown drag out to who's going to finish second, third, fourth. Uh, and I think there are a lot of teams all have a shot at Colorado's a lot better than they have been, even though the record doesn't show it. They only got beat by five up in Lincoln the other night. But let's take a look at what's going to happen this week. Uh, Saturday, a big game down in Norman. Uh, the Cornhuskers go down there. We are at Iowa State. Kansas goes to Colorado. Oklahoma's in Missouri. That'll be a that's a, a early season a game that's very important. Uh, then of course on Wednesday night we play uh, Cal State Northridge, and that's our last non-conference game. We'll try to keep that that winning record uh, uh, going. We've won 61 in a row now. And of course the Cyclones and the Cowboys probably lost more than anyone else this season, uh, Bill, through graduation. And when you look at uh, Iowa State's roster. Uh, you don't see too many familiar <laughs> faces, but uh, guys, uh, they've done a great job in coaching their ball club. They lost at K-State in kind of an ugly game, but then on Wednesday evening, they played Marquette in Milwaukee and played a terrific game, and, and Marquette's a very good basketball team. So uh, we've had some great tussles up there in Ames, yes, and uh, I would assume this one will be the same. It'll be a very competitive game. and. Probably another ugly game because they have a hard time scoring just like we do. Good defensive battle. Coach, best of luck to you on that one. And, uh, again, don't forget the Cowboys back home at Gallagher-Iba Arena on Wednesday. For Eddie Sutton, I'm Bill T. And see you next week on the Eddie Sutton Show.